permission to fight. After the Prophet ﷺ became settled in Medina and the Ansar had protected him, Allah sent down the following ayah. Permission to fight has been given to those who are being fought against because they were wronged. And indeed, Allah is able to give them victory. They are those who have been evicted from their homes without right, only because they say, Our Lord is Allah. Surah Al-Hajj, ayah number 39 and 40. Here, Allah permitted for the believers to fight the polytheists. Some of the first battles were between squadrons and tribes or clans. Battle of Badr In the second year after Hijrah during Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ left out with 300 plus men from the believers in pursuit of a caravan of the Quraysh returning from Syria. However, Abu Sufyan diverted off route and Shaitan provoked the Quraysh to come and fight the believers. Both the believers and the Quraysh met at Badr and this was the big battle of Badr that was also referred to as Yawm al-Furqan the day of criterion. When the two armies encountered each other, the Prophet ﷺ supplicated in humility to Allah. So Allah aided the believers with angels who fought alongside them. Allah granted them victory over the disbelievers, raising the word of Allah. During this battle, 70 of the disbelievers were killed and 14 of the believers were martyred. Battle of Qaynuqa In the third year, Banu Qaynuqa broke the covenant. The Prophet ﷺ ordered the Muslims to besiege them for 15 nights. Once they surrendered, the Prophet ﷺ expelled them, and they were 700 in number. Battle of Uhud The Battle of Uhud was in the month of Shawwal. The Quraysh had come to seek revenge for their loss at Badr. They had come to al Madinah with around 3,000 men, while the Prophet ﷺ and his companions came out with 700 men and had been abandoned by the hypocrites. The attack for the Muslims was at the beginning of the day. Then Allah tested the Muslims and the polytheists attacked, targeting the Messenger of Allah وسلم, wounding him and breaking his tooth. At that time, the angels fought with him and 70 of the companions were martyred. From them was Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and Mus'ab ibn Umair and Anas ibn Nadr and Handala and Ghasil and other than them. Talha ibn Ubaidullah fought so well that day that the Prophet وسلم, said, Paradise is obligatory for Talha. The Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims headed back to the mountain where Allah protected them from the enemies. The day of Uhud was a testing time for the believers. Allah tested them and made clear to them the hypocrites and honoured those who were martyred. After the battle, the Prophet ﷺ heard that the Quraysh have come out again to exterminate the Muslims. So he headed towards them with the believers and what they had of wounds. However, when the Muslims arrived at Hamra al-Asad, the Quraysh heard this and fled back to Mecca. Fourth year after Hijrah. In the fourth year, there was an incident at Bir Ma'una where 70 of the companions who were the most knowledgeable of the Quran were killed. And there was also the battle of Banu Nadir of those whom the Prophet ﷺ besieged until Allah placed fear in their hearts and then expelled them from Al Madinah. Surah Al Hashr was revealed about them. Battle of Muraisi. In the fifth year, the Prophet ﷺ left out to fight Banu Mustaliq and returned victorious. During this journey, tayammum was legislated. The slander against mother of the believers Aisha also occurred, though she was pure. This was very intense upon her and the Prophet ﷺ also, until Allah revealed her innocence in Surah An-Nur and those who spread the rumours were lashed. Battle of the Combined Forces The Battle of the Trench occurred in the month of Shawwal during the sixth year after Hijrah. The Jews pledged support to the Quraysh and anyone else who swore an oath to fight the Prophet and his companions. The Quraysh joined forces with Banu Sulaym, Banu Asad, Fazara, Ashja, and other than them, and they all came to Medina with 10,000 men. Sulman and Farsi advised the Prophet to build a trench that would protect them from the combined forces. The Prophet set out with 3,000 men. He used the mountain of Sirat, as a protection from behind and a trench as a protection in front of them. The Prophet ﷺ had entered a pact with the tribe of Banu Quraydah. However, they broke the covenant and joined the combined forces fighting against the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ then sent Nu'aym ibn Mas'ud to the combined forces and deceived them within their own ranks and caused them to split. Allah then sent an army from the wind, demolishing their camps, turning upside down their cooking pots. They were shaken by the winds and fear entered their hearts until they fled and abandoned the battle, having attained nothing from their plots. The Prophet ﷺ then returned to Banu Quraydah and appointed Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh as to judge over their affair. This is the battle that Surah Al-Ahzab has been revealed about. Peace Treaty 
In the sixth year after Hijrah, the Prophet set out with 1,400 of his companions in order to perform Umrah. When they reached Al Hudaybiyah, the Quraysh prevented them from entering to Mecca and sought truce with them to leave off fighting for 10 years. This was a great victory for the Muslims as Allah said, Indeed, we have given you a clear conquest. Surah Al Fat, Ayah number 1. This peace treaty allowed the Muslims to return to Mecca the following year to perform Umrah. So they returned the following year in the month of Dhul Qa'dah and performed Umrah al Qada. Battle of Khaybar. Twenty days after the Prophet's return from Al Hudaybiyah, he set out for Khaybar, north of Al Madina. Here they besieged the Jews for twenty days and fought fiercely until the Jews became certain of their own destruction and pleaded for peace. The Prophet then allowed them to farm the land for payment of half of its fruit and grain. Ja'far's arrival. While the Prophet was in Khaybar, Abu Huraira came to Al Madina having braced Islam. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the Prophet's cousin, and those who were with him had returned from Abyssinia and met the Prophet in Khaybar. They were also joined by Abu Musa al Ashari and his people. Battle of Mu'tah. The Battle of Mu'tah occurred during the eighth year after Hijrah because Shirahbir ibn Amr al Ghassani murdered the Prophet's envoy, messenger, en route to the king of Rome. The Prophet then readied a force of 3,000 men under the command of Zayd ibn Haritha. The Prophet said, If Zayd falls in battle, then Ja'far ibn Abi Talib take charge. However, if he falls in battle, then Abdullah ibn Ruaha take charge. Heracles, the king of Rome, and those who allied with him from the Arabs, set out with 200,000 men. The two forces met in battle, and all those given command by the Prophet were martyred. Then the command was handed to Khalid ibn al-Walid. He led the Muslims well, and they were able to retreat safely from their enemy and the enemy of Allah. The Great Conquest of Mecca During the same year, Banu Bakr, those who had entered a pact with the Quraysh, attacked Banu Khuza'a. They were in a pact with the Prophet ﷺ, and the Quraysh aided them secretly. When this reached the Prophet ﷺ, he was determined to conquer Mecca. Abu Sufyan came to Medina to speak to the Prophet ﷺ. However, he ﷺ, refused to hear anything from him. So Abu Sufyan spoke to Abu Bakr, Umar and Ali to speak with the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. However, they all refused also. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam asked Allah to blind the Quraysh so that they wouldn't know of him coming to them. Allah answered this supplication and the Prophet Wasallam left out with 10,000 men until they entered Mecca. Just before they conquered Mecca, the Prophet Wasallam's uncle Al-Abbas embraced Islam. When they conquered Mecca, from the things that the Prophet Wasallam said was, whoever enters Abu Sufyan's house will be safe. Whoever enters the masjid will be safe, and whoever closes the door will be safe. The Prophet ﷺ didn't fight anyone except for those who attempted to fight him, or a few who harmed him and harmed the Muslims, deeming their blood to be lawful. When the Prophet ﷺ entered Mecca, he circulated the Kaaba not in the state of Ihram. Then he called Uthman ibn Talha and took the key for the Kaaba and destroyed all the idols, then returned the key to Uthman. After Mecca was conquered, many embraced Islam. All the tribes came to the Prophet ﷺ embracing Islam. Destroying the idols After conquering Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ sent his companions to destroy the idols and temples around Mecca. He sent Amr ibn As to destroy Suwa. He sent Sa'd ibn Zayd to destroy Man. He sent Khalid ibn Walid to destroy Al-Uzza. And he sent Al-Tufayl to destroy Dil Kafain. And he sent Ali to destroy the idol called Tai. Battle of Hunayn. When the tribe of Hawazin heard of Mecca being conquered, they gathered to march towards the Prophet, taking with them all their wealth, women and offspring. The Prophet set out towards them with 12,000 men. The Muslims were amazed by their large number until they reached the valley of Hunayn. The Hawazin sprang towards the Muslims suddenly. Like one man, this caused many of the Muslims to flee out of fear except for the Prophet ﷺ, his family and a small group of the Muhajirun, those who had migrated to Al-Madinah. And whoever who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made firm from those who believed until they returned and fought with the Prophet ﷺ. Allah made them victorious over their enemy and the people of the Hawazin fled to Ta'if. 
After this, 14 men from the tribe of Hawazin who had embraced Islam came to the Prophet ﷺ requesting their families from amongst the captives. The Prophet ﷺ and his companions fulfilled their request. Battle of Ta'if After dealing with the Hawazin, the Prophet ﷺ was determined to invade Ta'if. When they arrived at Ta'if, they besieged their fort for 18 days. Then they left after no fighting had taken place. Battle of Tabuk in the ninth year, the expedition of Tabuk, the difficult expedition, took place. It was during the hottest days, the days of shelter and fruits. This was the hardest time for the people to set out. When the Prophet ﷺ wanted to set out, he encouraged his companions to give in charity. Uthman radiallahu gave 300 camels with their saddles, blankets and 1,000 dinar. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ then said, Whatever Uthman does after this day, no harm shall come to him. The rest of the companions gave according to their ability. Most of the hypocrites stayed behind, abandoning the Prophet ﷺ, along with three of the best companions without any excuse, Ka'b ibn Malik, Hilal ibn Umayyah, and Mirara ibn al rabi They all sought pardon from the Prophet ﷺ when he returned to Medina. Allah sent down about them the following ayah. And he also forgave the three who were left behind and regretted the error. Surah at Tawbah, ayah number 118. Allah had forgiven the three companions due to their truthfulness. However, Allah shamed and blamed the hypocrites in the same surah and sealed their hearts. This surah was also referred to as the exposure for how it exposes the hypocrites. During this expedition, the Prophet ﷺ made and wrote treaties with Ayla, the people of Jarba. Adra, Ukaidr, that they would pay the jizya taxes to live under the covenant of the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ stayed in Tabuk for 18 days, then left because no fighting had taken place. When he returned to Medina, Allah commanded him to destroy the masjid of the hypocrites. He says, And there are those hypocrites who take from themselves a mosque for causing harm and disbelief and division among the believers, and as a station, for whoever has warred against Allah and his messenger before. And this was the last expedition that the Prophet ﷺ participated in himself.